Okay, folks, here we are, and I thought I would do a little bit of a vignette, if you will, a small video on the electrical system exclusively for this trailer, because honestly, it is not that complicated. I do a lot of residential electric, and this was, you know, as easy as residential. Matter of fact, it is residential. Okay, so here we go. I open up this door, I come over here, I flick that on, so let's go ahead and do that. So if I, if I plug the trailer into shore power, this is what I see when I open up the hatch in the fact that uh, I have these LEDs that just pop right on and I have a remote control that I can change the color and turn them off and do all kinds of things. But then the next step, that light switch, that light switch, which is wired, the upcoming feed is going to go down through that cubby right in there and then it goes back to the actual electrical feed. So it feeds from up, feeds into this, that outlet is always hot and then we have two lines coming out of there. Those lines come up all through the hats, rejoin up there, come over, and then you can see one that tails off to the right here into this switched outlet. And that's what that switch controls. And that switched outlet, of course, just gets my light package right there. So no fancy wiring. I just zip tied them together uh, with the extra wire and it just plugs in. And that's all that is. I happen to have one of those sockets that plugs into a light switch. I use those actually to test circuits sometimes. And I happen to have an LED light bulb that I plugged in there because my countertop was pretty dark with the, you know, the lights ending there. There was just a lot of shadow here. And so that actually covered it. Otherwise, my electrical system, also then you see that feed goes over and behind that glue bot into my charging station cabinet. And that wire then comes down and through the back into this outlet right here, this double duplex. And that feeds that, uh, so that outlet is always hot if the trailer is on. And that, of course, has all of my chargers accounted for because I have those two uh, power strips back there. So everything charger is plugged into that, and so I am pretty good to go. That black line actually comes back out of, let me just switch around, out of that hole, and it goes up to this little kind of USB bank that I have right up there. I'm not really happy with that particular device. It hasn't functioned as, as well as I thought, but that's the electrical. Okay, so let's then go to the front of the trailer and show the electrical system. So let me get down here. All right, so here is the electrical system. This is the first in line in the fact that I have a pigtail, that yellow line, that is actually feeding this outlet. So power comes into there and it forward feeds the electricity from there. In this, I have the white line and that's simply going to those LED lights. And the black line is actually coming down and it's just my air compressor that is then always plugged in. Although I typically have the air compressor off unless I'm going to actually use it just because it does draw a lot. All right, so, <coughs> excuse me, that pigtail comes up and around, down, and then ties into the line on my reel. This line on my reel is a 10-3, 100-foot extension cord, so it's a pretty heavy-duty extension cord, 20 amp. With that pigtail in, the reel out, that line then comes down, heads out of the trailer through those electrical pullers. There is one on top, and then there's one underneath the trailer, which has really helped the smoothness of both that and the uh, airline being pulled out on the job site. And if you follow that line, let me kind of scooch back this way. Looking over here, if you see that window right there, uh, you see the electrical line going up through the window. Uh, that is actually that line. It goes into my panel and then plugs into the outlet by my panel. So this is my electrical uh, system. That's, that's exactly everything that I've got for electrical. And that would be the little remote sensor for my LEDs. And these LEDs have been very, very handy because they light up this space down in here and really make it a lot brighter to see inside those. Not that it's a big deal, but that was a really nice occurrence for those LEDs. Lastly, for electrical, I will say, if I had it to do over again, I am very comfortable with this electrical setup. But I do want, eventually, if I keep this trailer, to put an outlet over here somewhere, whether I mount it, Somewhere in this cubby, if I mount it to uh, this aluminum strut, somewhere I would like an outlet because this outlet here is very functional and it's always hot. And so having an outlet over here to service this side of the trailer would be just wonderful where I could have benches set up and run power. 
from there. Also, I would then tap off of that and I would put an outlet in my small tool garage over here somewhere because this, of course, being a radio and a charger, I would like to have that plugged in so it would actually take care of itself and char be charging if it's in the trailer and the trailer's plugged in. Okay, there is my electrical situation, and there's really nothing more to it. If you have any questions about the electrical, by all means, please ask. In the future, I anticipate maybe a motion sensor, and also I anticipate solar, and I would anticipate onboard power using marine deep cycle batteries. This trailer is a little bit too small to accommodate that, but the next trailer should have both power options. Thank you.